today's video we're gonna talk about some really good tips and tricks that you should know about ranked play especially those who are new to the franchise and you're not really familiar with the realm of how competitive play works i am typically a multiplayer type of guy so the transition is obviously a little rough for me so i'm here to share with you guys a couple of tips and tricks that i've personally picked up because i have become addicted to ranked play there's just something addicting about it that is just it's a breath of fresh air needless to say and i'm sure a lot of you guys who are watching this video right now can definitely agree i know none of us are you know actual pro players some of this stuff may actually come off like i'm too serious but i'm just overly competitive sometimes like i was saying so the first tip that you have to do is remove your normal gameplay mindset it's all about winning the match nothing else matters just win the match that's what competitive is all about nobody cares if you're going 30 kills two deaths and it doesn't even matter if you guys lose the match you know you have to in some way shape or form be a contributing member to your teammates so for example in this specific gameplay I assume the role of being somebody who is going to cut off a specific lane so that my teammates who are actively on the objective already can have an easier time capturing it. There's also no such thing as camping in ranked. You know, I actually got called out for camping in this specific match, even if I wasn't, you know, I, there, at no point was I camping because it's all about the win. You know, if you have to run to where I am to win, why would I move? I really think comms is very important important as well and if you are the only one with a mic then it's okay just come up with some plan you know and and most people will listen to you most believe it or not most people are listening even if they don't have a mic i've noticed some players when we're playing search and destroy they they try to wait till the very last second to defuse the bomb or you know they spin around 360 while they're def defusing the bomb you know that's something that you shouldn't do in uh, ranked play you know a lot more people will have more respect for you if you don't do that you just need to defuse the bomb immediately there's no reason to monkey around and do all that kind of stuff you know just get the w and move on you know and don't and don't be flashy if you see the last guy who's planning the bomb uh you know don't try to go for some uh, melee assassination type of kill you know just kill the guy normally and then defuse the bomb right away there, there's no need to be flashy and waste time you know you're not going to be impressing anybody by doing that make sure you study a lot okay like if you really want to get into ranked play and you want to do a lot better you need to learn the maps as best as you can you can watch all the youtube videos you want maybe find some rush route guides on there you know the internet is a lovely place i mean that's how you found this video right so just learn the angles you know learning how to enter an area learning how to mantle around maps a lot faster navigate around maps around faster you know there's definitely creative ways to get around maps that the average player doesn't know about another thing too is learn how to drop shot and jump shot that is definitely a must in this type of game mode because uh this is ranked play you know people are just absolutely trying the best that they can to destroy you because they need to get a win you know we're not just playing uh, casually here go into the gunsmith and practice practice with your favorite gun the gun that you are going to be using in rank play maybe that might be the tag 56 maybe it might be the cast off 762 maybe it may might be the vaznev okay so just practice as much as you possibly can to be a professional it means to practice you know when you're not on the main stage and you're not actually in the match where a win or a loss at will count against you on your record people are practicing you know if you really want to get that into it and really see some results then you got to practice make sure you're running the meta okay and right now the meta is the tag 56 the vaznev as well as my personal favorite you don't hear about this much but this is my personal favorite very underrated is the cast off 762 if you guys did not see my video on those three weapons and the class setups and the stats behind them make sure to check it out it's a very interesting video that you can learn a lot from and i'll leave that link down below in the description but anyways if you're not using the meta you are going to lose the gunfight nine times out of ten you want to close the skill gap as much as humanly possible 
between yourself and the opponent. When there's a meta, they're using the best weapons in the game. And if you're not, then you're clearly going to lose those gunfights. You need to win those gunfights in order to win the game. Also, try learning the callouts as much as you possibly can, you know. And of course, this will also come over time. The more time that you spend on a specific map, the more that you play it, the more that you play with people who know the callouts, you'll just learn to understand it over time. But obviously, you can still do some quick Google searches and look at some official callout maps for the maps that are in the game right now for ranked play. This will literally literally help you out a lot especially your teammates as well they will really appreciate you for these call outs every gunfight will matter and when you die somewhere and you call it out it's going to help your teammates a lot another tip too is watching how people move between hard points objectives if you learn this you can definitely step your game up and level up don't be sour just because you get destroyed by someone maybe you could watch the kill cam a little bit and see what they're doing see how they killed you you know that's the only way to really get better is through your faults and your failures so just be a student of the game basically now i want to talk a little bit about some of the game modes real quick so a uh, hard point let's talk about hard point first so realistically only one person really needs to be on the hard point. Remember, you have a team of four players. So what I've noticed when I'm playing the game is that I have at least maybe one or two people on the hard point. And uh, the other two, including me, we're just uh, looking at lines of sights where people need to go through to get to the hard point. So in a way, there's offense, which is my teammates on the hard point. And then there's defense, which is me and the other person. So doing this, your entire team doesn't get stunned or grenaded or wiped out immediately. So, you know, you have a good balance there of offense and defense at the same exact time while your teammates are capturing the flag. And also communication is going to be key there as well of establishing what roles are going to be whose. Also, another nice strategy for hardpoint is having at least one or two people rotate earlier to the next hardpoint. Doing this will help beat the other team to the next hard point there's a lot of wasted time when you're running to the next one so it's just best to let at least one or two people start rotating to the next hard point it's just so much smarter and obviously do not forget to run trophy systems it's going to help out with those stuns and grenades also it's a very smart idea to just run with a team if you're going to be pushing a hard point because what happens when you're trying to take over a hard point while the enemy's already there is that if you're going solo you're going to get taken out instantaneously and then you know you have your teammates rushing in one at a time they keep getting taken out you see what i'm saying here and then you're busy spawning back in running back to the objective it just becomes a cycle of just no progress you know you guys have to attack the hard point at the same exact time if you're trying to overtake a hard point do not do it one at a time that is a big mistake all right now when it comes to control control is literally the complete opposite of hard point the more people in it the faster you take it so when taking a point three people should be on it and one will be holding a critical angle like i was saying you want to hold down angles where you know there's going to be opponents coming to be able to defend their own objective from you taking it also a visual cue to understand is knowing the colors of the ring around the site so when you're attacking and you see the ring is red you know for a fact that someone is inside of the site if the ring is gray or clear you know that no one is in sight and you can check other spots and clear it appropriately. Now, last but not least, let's talk about search and destroy. So with this one, like I was saying earlier, just defuse the bomb immediately. And also when defending, just defend it. You know, you don't have to rush around like a madman. And I'm guilty of this as well, you know, because I I'm not used to playing search and destroy. I've probably played maybe less than 10 games this year on Modern Warfare 2. So I I'm still learning it myself. But that's what I've come to realize is that, hey, you know what? When we're on defense, we don't really need to to be aggressive because we only have one life to live and uh, all we got to do is just defend the objective. Just let them come to you. So uh, when you let them come to you and you're on defense, you can also listen for footsteps. You know, don't no need to push for kills. No one cares about the KD ratio. It's all about getting the win and being a good team player. And also, don't forget to run Dead Silence and Search and Destroy. That is literally a crutch field upgrade, in my opinion, for Search and Destroy. And also, when you're planting the bomb, after you plant the bomb, make sure you're in an area where you can clearly see it, but you're still a little bit concealed. So yeah, that's pretty much about most of the tips that I can think of. If you guys have more, make sure to leave some down below in the comments. Now, I do have pro versions 
of the Vaznev as well as the TAC-56 and also a recommended meta class setup for the 762 and also a cracked TAC-56 class setup. Let's start off with my personal class setup here. So we're not going to go too in depth here with all the stats and all that kind of stuff. I've made specific videos for these guns already. So make sure to check those out on my channel. Do not miss a video. Just a quick overview. We have the X10 ported to 90 FSS shark fin 90 barrel. 556 high velocity and we have the demo clean shot grip as well as the tv x line pro now one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're building your class setups if you want to go ahead and try building one out yourself is to try to minimize the amount of cons as much as you possibly can so a good example would be to use this under barrel for the fss shark fin 90 this has literally zero cons so what makes the fss shark fin 90 so cool is that again there's no cons but you also do get to tune it to whatever direction you want to. So let's say I wanted more aim down side speed. You know, we can simply just do that. You know, you don't also want to max it out. If you max it out, you're pretty much hurting the attribute here for recoil. So, and you're not really getting much more out of your handling when you do that. If you take a look, you, you max it out, it doesn't really benefit you. So when I go back down here, Take a look at that handling. See how it kind of like jerks a little bit. So this right here would be the sweet spot for tuning it out to get that aim down sight speed. I'm just going to quickly go over my tunings here. You can just take a screenshot if you would like to just to prevent the video from being way too long. So this is the X10 ported 290 tuning settings that I have here. And then for my high velocity rounds, here is my tuning. Go ahead, take a screenshot. And for the demo clean shot grip and as well as the TV X line pro. Use whatever you want to in these categories, but I do recommend Dead Silence. It really helps because remember, there's only four players when you're playing against the enemy. So, of course, the sound is going to be a little bit more sensitive. So having Dead Silence is going to give you every bit of an advantage. And then for the perks, you can use whatever you want to. But remember, stuns and uh, grenades are being thrown constantly. So this could actually help you out. Combat Knife, I like it to get around the map a little bit faster. Moving on to my meta cast off 7.62 class. Now, just a brief overview of why. I consider this to be meta is because stat wise again I made a specific video covering the stats about the cast off 762 and yes it did receive a nerf but it's really just a slap on the wrist when you take a look at the overall stats it's still superior and effective as an assault rifle as well as the time to kill the shots to kill in every single part of the body the whether it be the torso the lower torso the limbs headshots especially it just has every bit of statistical advantage that you can get for the muzzle we got the tempest gh50 under barrel is going to be the fss shark fin 90 we got the high velocity rounds uh true tech grip for my rear grip and the cast off rama one thing i will say about the rear grip is if you're having trouble still controlling recoil you know just replace this one with the demo x2 grip if you would like to and then prepare to take some screenshots here for my tuning settings but again you can just tune this however you want this is for the tempest gh50 and for the fss shark fin 90 high velocity rounds true tack grip and the cast off rama stock all right, moving on to the Pro Vaznev class setup. So you have to understand that this gun is only meant to be used up close and personal. You cannot challenge assault rifles at longer ranges, basically anything longer than 20 meters. I really don't recommend it uh, because the time to kill on this gun is only going to be effective up to that 10 to maybe 15 meter range if you're lucky and you're very accurate with your shots. So this is the current Pro class setup for the Vaznev 9K. It's uh, very typical. You got the FSS Shark Fin 90 under barrel the true tag grip as well as the ultras at stock yes there's only three attachments because if you take a look at other attachments all it's going to do is just make the gun slower you know muzzles will make the gun ads slower a barrel will definitely make the ads slower um, magazine as well so there's not really much to work with but this is a great reliable smg for up close now for tuning go ahead take your screenshots but again the pros, they do not tune their attachments, and it actually wouldn't surprise me if they uh, GA tuning for us regular players in ranked play. So uh, just be prepared for that. And here's the uh, tuning for the Ultras at stock. 
All right, last but not least, we finally have our professional TAC-56 class set up. So remember, this is different from my personal one. The difference is that you are going to have a slower ADS if you're using this class setup, as well as a little bit worse recoil control. So just keep those things in mind. Again, I did a direct comparison of the TAC-56 Pro class setups versus my own. So you be the judge. I, I did read the comments. Some people actually like my class setup a little better. For the pros, they're using the 17.5 inch tundra pro barrel and then the fss shark fin 90 high velocity rounds demo clean shot grip as well as the tv x line pro let's go over the tuning real quick so for the tuning this is what i have remember the pros do not tune their attachments i'm only doing this because us normal people we're able to so why not right then for the fss shark fin 90 here's the tuning again and the high velocity rounds tuning demo clean shot grip tuning and the TV X line pro tuning. So before I forget, there is an alternate attachment that pros use. So instead of the TV X line pro, they're going to replace this one with the TV Cardinal stock. So again, when it comes to the tuning, you know, you can do whatever you want to here. If you want more mobility, you can, but obviously it's going to hurt your accuracy. But if you want to get the best of both worlds, this is probably the best way to tune this attachment right here. Just like that. So 1.44 and 2.06 for the TV Cardinal stock. All right, if you guys made it this far into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit a like, if you did learn something, if it was informational, I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to subscribe, turn on notice, and I'll see you guys in the next one.